Well, hello everyone. I'm back again, Randall Schwartz, here to bring you another interesting tip, trick, technique, something like that, uh, about Dart and Flutter. Uh, this one's been coming up a lot recently, especially with people moving to null safety. I'm going to talk about why sometimes null safety seems to get in your way. Um, it's trying to save you, and I'll show you how it's doing that. So here we've got uh, just a normal Dart uh, command line created. Uh, I'm using Visual Studio Code, uh, my favorite text editor, and this is what it chooses for a default. Uh, ignore the file name for a moment. I have a tool that builds a random place to cut Dart up in uh, using a UUID. So I'll talk about that in a different screencast, not today though. Okay, so we've got this. This is great. So let's build something. We're going to build a class called coin that's going to hold whether a coin is heads or tails based on a bool false for uh, let's see what I decided it was going to be I was going to say uh, true for heads false for tails okay so uh, before we do that I'm going to introduce some randomness to it so I'm going to go up here at the top and I'm going to import dart.math dart colon math we won't use that for now and we'll get an unused import for a while but I don't care so uh, let's create the class down here we're gonna go uh, class coin and nothing much inside of it it's going to hold a bool um, for the side which side is face up now um, let's say that uh, I want to make this nullable Okay, now I'm using Dart 212 plus, so of course it's not running in legacy mode. Oh, let's not put a question mark on side. Let's put it on bool. Okay, that's great. We now have a value that when it's uninitialized uh, can be anything, and it can also be set to either true or false or null, which makes a difference here. So we're going to create a simple constructor for it that is going to basically use the good old this trick to be able to create that okay looks happy so far okay not too much exciting there uh, let's create a few of these and get rid of this and we can go print coin if I can spell coin true okay and print so that would be something with heads coming up, right? And then print coin false, and that's going to be the value with tails. And just to show you that we could do this, print coin um, null, because null is a valid value, valid value for the side that is up. Okay, now if we run this puppy uh, with that little run tag there, you'll see instance of coin instance of coin instance of coin not very useful we need to add essentially a string uh, get string to string thing on it so let's go ahead and build one let's return a string to string it's going to want me to add an override on it right string to string no args to it provide a body We'll worry about a lot of these matches in a second. This is going to allow me to add an override. So we're going to add the override. Yay. Good so far. This should work, uh, but I have to put some values there. So I go, okay, this is great. So I've got true, false, and null. So I do the obvious thing here. Um, if, um, if the side is null, return hidden if side equals null return how about I can type hidden okay great so we've taken care of the null case at this point side is going to be either true or false right huh. guess what we I could say well then return if side um, heads colon tails um, 
Why am I getting red? I don't like red. Red's not a fun color. Why am I getting that? I've already checked to see if it's null and gotten the heck out of Dodge. So why is that still breaking up? Hmm. How can side be null at this point? Something you all, or some of you, may have actually asked yourself when writing very similar code. I've done my null checks, but somehow it's still blowing up. Well, for now, what we're going to do is we're going to hide this for a second. And, uh, you know, really, i, I got to get this right here. So let's just go um, return if the side is null, treat it as false. Uh, so I, that's not saying which question yet. Oh, side is, is null, then treat it as false. There we go. That's closer. Otherwise, and then therefore we're going to return. Uh, we At this point, we're looking for either true or false, which is going to be heads or tails, just like I wanted to do in the first place. So all I've really done is I've substituted the uh, null value in this step, if it happens to be null, we'll force it to be false instead, and then we go ahead and show tails for the null one. Now, this should never be reached if it's null, because we've already done this code up here. Right, so this is silly. Why is this code up here not protecting us down here? Hmm, okay. Well, here's why. Okay, why can't it just presume that there? Here's why. I'm going to subclass coin. I'm going to create <laughs> class devious coin. And it extends coin. So it takes all the behavior up and adds to it. Okay, and also says it doesn't have a zero arg. Creation. Oh, because I'm going to have to create it here. So I'm going to say devious coin. Its constructor is uh, bool side, similar to the one before, colon super side. Super side me. Okay. We're now closer, but I'm about to illustrate why to string gets so confused here and why it can't say well if sides null here it certainly can't be null there here's why it can't say that because suppose I implement a getter for side down here and we simply return oh I don't take Verdmans, that's okay. I'll add the override there. There we go. Now it's really happy, right? Happier anyway. Okay, and we're going to say that this coin has a side that is randomly one of three sides. Random dot next bool parens, of course. I can hear some of my friends screaming that. Uh, I should be storing one copy of random and using it for everything instead of recreating it on every call, but I don't care. This is faster for now. No. So if the next Boolean is true, we return null. Otherwise, we return on random true or false. So random, same thing we just had now, random dot next bool. Okay. Oh, the code all compiles. So if I create a devious coin, I could pass in anything I wanted for side. Because the only thing that get side does is it changes the way the side is being fetched up here. There's an implicit getter, of course, for this. But we've fixed that getter. We've said no. When we get side, it might be null or true or false. Okay? So that's why 
well, I'm almost there, I guess. Why then, what then does this existence of this subclass have to do with whether I can uh, do a code analysis on the other class? Well, look, this coin will be random when you say get its side. So maybe it returned true here. We don't know that it's going to return. Um, uh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it returns true up here. We don't know that at this point it might return null this time. Which, of course, would be a, a runtime violation for that. Yeah, and you can put some exclamation marks to like that solve this. And that's the way I actually did it the first time. But there's an easier way. In fact, let's show that. So let's uh, comment this out here. And we'll do this. And this is sort of the way that a lot of people tackle this. But is that really going to be good now? What it means is... If this time we call side, we got null, we're returning hidden. But if this time we call side, we get a null, we blow up. <laughs> Ick. And it might be because this time it was true, and this time it was null. Because of the devious coin down here. Okay? So that's why it can't allow for that. But there is a fix. There is a fix. The problem is we're referencing side twice in here. If we right at the top of this guy go far side 2 equals side. Okay. And then replace the side with side 2. We can do that also here. And even told me that exclamation mark was never needed. Why? Because now it's able to do value analysis, data flow analysis on side two, because side two can't be overridden. Much simpler, much more like what it wants, right? So this is a way to solve this. And again, what's the differentiation between side two and side? Side can be overridden by subclasses and may or may not be overridden. doesn't matter. It might be overridden in the future. So the data flow stuff cannot presume that once it was one value, it's going to be the same value next time. And this applies for everything. It applies for knowable. It applies for is. Everything. Because those things can return different values because their subclasses might override it and do probably nothing this weird but it's possible to do that. So I hope that makes it clear. I hope that helps you out. And uh, now, please, please, some of my friends are asking general questions like, well, does that mean we should always copy the variable coming in into a local value? No, not always. Just use it like you normally use it. And if you end up with some data flow problems, then all it's doing is warning you against a possible devious coin. Hope that helps. All right. This is Randall Schwartz signing off for now. Uh, go forth and, uh, and uh, let's see, check on all the things and thumbs up all the things and all that stuff. Subscribe to my channel. You know the usual drill. I don't, I don't go for all the you know, sort of plate um, material for all that. Anyway, there you go. And we'll see you again next time.